the opportunity to collaborate in the classroom or at home. So we're gonna do six word stories, right? Even smaller. Black Eyed Poetry is a whole text. But um, I tried this with my module for grade eight for UP and it was very successful because um, we used pictures to uh, inspire their writing because we're all very visual, right? So if I were to tell you sitting there, write a six word story, you have to think about the material, you know, what happened this morning or last week or what's on your mind. It's a little bit of pressure, but we're gonna do it using uh, photography. So I'm gonna show you a few images and you're gonna write a six word story. Whatever comes to your mind when you see that image, right? That's the good thing. You shouldn't, you shouldn't block any of the thoughts that come through. You'll see an image, you'll have an association because of you know, your past, your history, your, your preferences and you're gonna write a six word story. Only six words, it could be five, but no more than six. Okay, um, I'm gonna do it too, so I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds per photo and then we'll move on. So everybody has some paper ready? Okay, and let's go, Noel. All right, sorry, so this, <laughs> these are my examples. Um, these are the photos I used for the module. So these are some photos I've taken before and unfortunately it's very bright right here, so you can't see the white font, but you can see how you can combine an image with a six word story, right? So, yeah, okay, let's try. All right, this is the first one. Write your six word story. Three, two, one. So it's okay if you're not finished, we're gonna move on to the next photo, no? Nice. Five more seconds. All right, last one. Okay, so another reason this is good for young learners is, again, they have to think about things like voice, you know, who's, who's narrating this six word story? Is it somebody in the picture? Is it the person in the picture or the dog in the picture? Who are they talking to? It's really up to them. So let's go back to the first picture, Noel. Well, so everybody knows this is a dog, uh, but again, Students can be creative, so they're gonna write something funny, something cute, something, I don't know, maybe this dog is gonna attack or something. I was imagining, uh, since we're on, since he started the romance topic, I have to continue it. Half tiger, half bulldog, 100% single. 
as if he's uh, looking for love or something. Mm -hmm. Does somebody want to share theirs? Does somebody have a scary one? Maybe he's a vicious dog. Dai, you wanna? Do you write something? Yeah. Yeah, right. A tiger clothed in cuteness. Is that six? Five. You did it in five. Okay. Yeah, because he kind of has like a tiger kind of look to his body. Right? His coat. Anybody else? Yeah, in the back. You did in five, too. Yeah, good. So that one had a really specific voice, right? As if the dog is talking, or somebody's talking to the dog. Ladies, want to share one? Okay, yes, please. Oh, shadow, move not for me. Ooh. Oh, shadow, move not for me. Okay, I can see a little bit of shadow going on. Yeah. He also has a little doggy toy, that rope. What's he doing with that? Okay, let's see the next one. So this one's more of a nature shot, more of a landscape, with like one character, one, maybe one protagonist. Anybody know where this is? Yeah, it's in Mindanao. It's like uh, Surigao. Yeah, it's not too. It's maybe a few hours from Davao. I haven't been there, but it's a real place. So, anybody want to go first? What do you think? Is this like a happy, peaceful story, or is it gonna get scary? Mine goes like this. She thought she was alone, but it ends on a but, right? So that's another reason I like the six word story. It could be a cliffhanger. You could just stop on the word but, or and, or then. Maybe there's something deep below there gonna come up and get her. Too many horror movies. Jaws. Anybody have one? What about this side? This side's being quiet. Okay, Ruby, you have one? Okay, what a pro prolific life. I'm alone. And so kind of peaceful and tranquil being alone in a big lagoon. Yeah, man. <laughs> one more time, I like it. One more time? One more. Hey, beware. So actually, like, she's the scary one. She's the nymph. Like the siren. Right? She might catch somebody by singing. Sounds very Filipino. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yeah, in the back, please. Embracing the real me. Yeah, right. Embracing the real me with nature. Good, great. All right, last one, another landscape, but there's no people. Anybody, can you guess where that is? You should know, my grad students. I told you when I went there. Huh? Myanmar, yeah, Burma. Anybody want to share first? Yeah, please. By me? All depths of imagination. Oh, depths of imagination. Great. So this is great. Imaginative. Yeah. Sunset. Sunset. Good. This is very kind of self reflective, meditative. Mm -hmm. Okay. Could have a lot of interpretations, maybe talking to God or something. Dream big, never beg. Dream big? Never beg. Never beg. Wow. That's only four, but that's really good. Wow. It can be less than six, sure. Yeah. Reach heights, but keep grounded. Oh, okay, that's good. Reach heights, but keep grounded. Stay grounded. Good metaphors from these balloons. Take us up and then bring us back down. Okay, let's see what's next. 
So this is one I really like. It's very fun because it's more than visual. Uh, it's using GIFs, so it's an image that's moving and on a loop, which is really a kind of meditative way to write or to think, right? So when I lived in New York, when I was getting my MFA, um, sometimes there's like a reading night at a coffee shop or a bar where people come and read their writing. And I saw this guy read once and he was really funny. And um, he was doing something he was calling GIF poetry. Or I don't know, do you guys call that GIF? Philippine English? Same thing, GIF, GIF. Um, so they're, they're great uh, writing exercises because really, you know, like with the photos, people are very visual. Uh, they associate certain things with different images. And the GIFs can be very funny or serious or fantastical. It really depends on the gift, but these are some screenshots of the gifts he used. And let's see what's next. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Um, so I think we're gonna try this and... We might try two, we'll see. So yeah, we're gonna do this one first, okay? So this is a gift an image on a loop. So I want you to write uh, any, any words that come to you from this. We're not doing the six word story anymore. It can be longer, okay? But take a few minutes to look at it and see what kind of poem you can write from that. Even though we're looking at the same image, uh, people are gonna gravitate towards something different, right? There's a lot going on. 
So for example, uh, the first time I looked at this, I noticed kind of the Buddhist posture, right? Like somebody praying. If you've ever been to a temple, uh, you can see the Buddha sitting there in different postures with their hand. They have different meanings, right? Um, some people might think the glass looks like a stained glass, you know, like a church or something. Um, a little bit robotic. What's going on inside? It's kind of dark. Can you see that? Is it spiraling? Right. Also kind of reminds me of a disco ball, right? One of those spinning. The way it gets cut by lights. They didn't notice it at first, but if you look at the hands, uh, it looks like it's moving a little bit. Can you see it? It's kind of rocking and moving back and forth. I think in my case, I focused on the spiral. So I wrote my poem based on some thoughts I got from that. The DNA helix goes round and round, spiraling. We'll never see it, this snake of our existence, offering us an apple eternally. So mine's a little bit more serious, but yours could be more about uh, the image of the stained glass or a disco ball or something more fun. Anybody want to share? what they thought of when they saw this? What does it make you think of? You don't have to read yours, but what do you think when you see that? What caught your eye? Which part? Money. money. Where's the money? <laughs> Makes you think of money? Something like sparkly, diamonds, something what, worth a lot of money? Jewelry? Do we want to have one person share theirs? Yeah, okay, in the back. Okay, what inspires me was the sign, okay, and the light. Uh, so, I, I wrote something like, you are right, you bear the light, the light of my life, now that I'm your wife, keep me in your sight. <laughs> I have a What's that? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, definitely. So that's another thing about teaching uh, this kind of workshop in different languages. I know for Filipino people, they like to rhyme. They think of rhyme for sure when they think of poetry. Um, that's fine, right? But typically in English nowadays, we think of free verse, right? We don't think about things have to rhyme. English isn't a very rhymey language since it's not very, it's not a romance language, right? Great, yeah, that was good. Rhyming is good also to remember, as a student can remember what they wrote. We'll do one more. Let's go to the next, the last picture, Noel. One's a little bit more peaceful, serene.
this one making you sleepy? It's very peaceful, right? Especially on a loop. Yeah. So I don't know what's wrong with me today, but I'm thinking very apocalyptical. What's going on? Maybe I'm just hangry. You want to hear mine? It's very short. It's, if climate change continues, Baguio in 100 years. It's going to be snowing there, maybe. I hope not. Anybody want to share? It's very peaceful, right? Very tranquil. Snow-capped mountains, rolling clouds, maybe sunset, kind of pink. One person? Yeah, let's hear it. Sweet. Kind of like a prayer. I like it. That was a prayerful. I like that. Okay, so I think we're almost out of time, but let's... You want to... Yeah, we have one more. One more. You're in a weird mood like me. Yeah. It's just a cloud. It's just a mountain. Okay, Noel, can you click the next? So the last point uh, is about 10 second essays. I really like this author I encountered. His name is James Richardson. Richardson. And he has a, some really good collections of writing and poetry. Called, uh, and one of them is 10 second essays. So they're really good, really short. They look like this, right? So, very brief, but very kind of philosophical, very powerful. I like number 28, for example, because people are always throwing stuff in the garbage as if it's gonna disappear magically, but throw it away, but there is no away. So things that we throw away actually stay on Earth, piling up somewhere. You know, this would be good for a kind of uh, self-reflective activity with students, maybe after they've read a text or done something, to get them to think, what have I been through, what have I done recently? Uh, if, obviously, if you don't want to buy his book, they're available online, these two websites. The links are very long. Obviously, don't try to put the whole thing in. You could just search, like, University of Michigan, or the second one, Richardson by the Numbers Vectors. But they're really good teaching tools. And that's it. Yeah, if you wanna if you wanna post something later on the theme of social media and literature, go ahead and post it online. When I did this with my UP grade eight students, um, we hashtag UP eighth poets so we could all find our poetry in one place. Right? It was kind of like using a Google folder or something. Okay. So thanks for coming, and I think we have a few minutes for some questions or comments. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you very much to um, uh, Mr. Edgley for his talk about the microliterature. Does anyone have any questions? That's a good question. I think even when I was, I didn't really start liking to write until I was like you know, 18 or older. I didn't read or write a lot when I was a kid. So yeah, you'll have students that don't like certain things, um, no matter what you teach or have taught. Whatever the topic, there's always a student that doesn't engage, they think they're not good at it, or they're not interested, or it's boring, et cetera, et cetera. 
So in that case, it's really a good idea to try to incorporate multiple intelligences. So make this like a group activity. Um, uh, when I, uh, so yeah, in this case, if you're doing something with like a gift poem, you could have them do, or you know, if they're doing something, you know, like a six word story, you can have one student on the internet searching for the picture they're gonna use, and then the other student is the one that's gonna do the writing, and the other student is gonna present it, gonna read it. So division of labor, break it up, not forcing. I think it's a really bad idea to force a student to do something creative. It's one thing to say you have to take this biology exam, but it's another thing to say you have to bear your soul in front of your peers, right? Because it's very personal, it's very private for some people. They can't do it, so maybe invite them to do it in a group setting. And um, yeah, you can open this up in a lot of different ways. For example, um, in Iligan I talked about um, multiple intelligence and multiple intelligences for, uh, and in the example was Hamilton. Have you guys heard of that play, Hamilton? About Alexander Hamilton. So it's a story about somebody, a really old guy, it's told in using hip hop, like you know, hip hop songs about Alexander Hamilton. So I invited the audience to think about Jose Rizal, his life, and how could you make a song about Rizal, you know, his childhood, going to Europe, you know, things that happened to him back in the Philippines. So in that case, the group could have maybe one person writing the lyrics, one person's gonna perform the song, one person's gonna direct it or something, but try to divide the task. So not putting too much pressure on one student. Any more questions? Let us um, give another round of applause to thank Mr. Ashley. Now we'd like to um, take this chance to thank our to thank the speakers um, for this um, session. So this certificate of appreciation goes to Miss a Dr. Amihan April Alcazar for conducting a workshop in the UP Cebu Conference on Development and Education, or CODE, language studies with the theme, language education, research, and instruction in the local global context on the 22nd of February 2020 at UP Cebu Professional Schools, SRP Campus, Cebu City. The conference is co-organized by Teachers Helping Teachers, where THD members from Japan and Philippines volunteer to conduct workshops. Given on the 27th of February 2020 at UP Cebu Professional Schools, SRP Cebu City. Signed by Kenneth Cavanlet, convener, Catherine M. Rodell, coordinator of the Master of Education program, Francis Michael Abad, Dean College of Social Sciences, and the Chancellor of UP Cebu, Lisa D. Coral. Thank you, Doctor. And um, with the same certificate details, a certificate of appreciation is given to um,